Hello there and welcome to uh, another photography vlog. In today's video, uh, I have come to a place in Cheltenham called, called uh, Cleave Common, which is at the top of Cleave Hill. It has been one of the hottest uh, days of the year so far and uh, it's, it's the evening time. Um, today I'm going to try and take a picture of a tree, a lone tree against a sunset with the Malvern Hills behind it. But as you can probably see behind me, there's absolutely no cloud cover tonight, which means that we're not going to get that sort of dramatic shot that I often like to try and get. I'll see you after this. I tell you what, what you can't see behind me is Gloucestershire, which uh, this is um, uh, basically Cleve Hill overlooks Cheltenham um, and Gloucester and all the way over over there we've got the Malvern Hills but there are hills basically circling uh, we're in a valley here um, and you can get a really good view of them from here and what we're seeing tonight right now is a load of haze on the horizon and that often means that you're going to get something quite special when the sun starts to set. I've done that sort of photo before where you have the really lovely rich colours and I'm hoping that that's what we're going to get tonight. The tree itself is still a slight way away and I've, I've made a bit of a rod for my own back because I've come out here with uh, three problems that I have to overcome in order to get to that tree in the first place. Firstly, this is a nice place. It's largely flat. It's mostly downhill from the car park, which means I'm going to have to walk all the way back uphill, but that's not a big problem. However, this is not even terrain. And that's made even worse by the fact that there are rabbits around here. And occasionally you see these little holes, they're tiny little ankle breaking holes that you can put your foot into. And that wouldn't be a good thing at all. Secondly, the ground is absolutely littered with sheep dung. We've got some sheep over there. They graze naturally on the common. And so, you know, of course, you, you've got sheep dung. So whilst you're walking and having to avoid that, I was thinking when I first came out, I know I can, I can make a vlog, I can walk all the way down here, camera in hand, talk to you about various different things whilst I'm trying to get to the tree. I can't do that. I need to watch where I'm going. <laughs> um, but I'm kind of excited about tonight because this is the first time I've gone out and taken a sunset for quite some time. And this is actually quite a nice location. Uh, the tree that I'm heading to, it's a lone tree, a tree on its own, set against the backdrop of the Malvern Hills. Uh, the sun is possibly just off to one side of it, so I'm not quite sure what we're going to get light-wise, not until I get up there and actually start to take a look at a composition, but it should be really interesting. And I don't know, it's, it's quite good. There's also uh, some masts over there. Uh, the uh, relay masts, I suppose they are, but they're quite an interesting thing again, it gets a uh, set against the landscape. So for, if, uh, for any reason I can't get to the tree, which I'm not really expecting there to be, what I would be able to do is to come back and take a picture of those, unless I'm incapacitated in some way, which may very well happen. I have absolutely no idea. Onwards and upwards anyway. Well, I've made it to the tree and there is no less sheep mess around here. <laughs> but now I really have to decide what I'm going to do because we've got probably about half an hour, maybe a little bit more, maybe three quarters of an hour uh, until we actually get to that point where the, the sun is setting. The sun's uh, this far off the horizon line right now. Uh, so we've got a little bit of, of time to wait. What I was going to do in the meantime, however, was to take a picture of a tree this way on. The sun is right over there right now. So it's giving us really nice lighting, incredibly nice lighting uh, on this tree uh, right there. I've got my uh, 10 to 25 mil lens on there, so I don't have to go miles away in order to get this. Um, and I want to kind of show the tree. It's got benches around it. That's what I'm sitting on right now. Uh, benches uh, in, in memory of, um, various uh, different people who were inspired by um, or who you know who, who wanted to be remembered on, on on this place which is kind of a a, a nice thing um, but it, it, right now I'm in a good position I've got some good light I better go and use it because you know it's so easy to miss the light like that now as I said 10 to 24 mil lens 
It's my new toy, so I keep using it on everything at the moment. Um, I'm probably going to be at f8 for this. Um, here's the camera. Uh, I guess I'll, I will put this on f8. Uh, we'll stick it on the 500 for the second and 160 for now. And we'll just have a look and see kind of what that's looking like. It's probably far too dark, isn't it? But of course, I'm pointing it in the wrong direction. So. I'm going to go uh, and set this shot up. Uh, now, I'm not going to put this on a, a tripod to do it. It is perfectly fine to have this handheld uh, because of the amount of light that we've got in here. Um, so it, it, something I, I kind of want to keep mentioning in the videos that I do uh, and I don't is that I put the camera on the on a tripod a lot. I do that to show you stuff. I don't do it. If I was here in normal circumstances, I wouldn't do it. So tonight, normal circumstances. I'm not going to put the camera on a tripod, but I am going to explain exactly what I'm doing as I'm doing it. Okay, so I'm about 12 foot away from the tree, something like that. Um, I've got the camera settings on uh, 125th, which is what I said before, f7.1, so I've boosted that up a little bit, and uh, what, uh, uh, 160 ISO. So we're at the base ISO for the camera, uh, which means we're not pushing it out too much. In terms of focal length, uh, we're probably at about um, 15 mil, I would say. I'm guessing because I've got 14 and 18 marked and I haven't got anything else. I think we're probably about, uh, at about 15 mil. And I'm going to frame this so that the tree is on the right hand side of the picture. What I want to see isn't just the tree in a shot, which should be a fine shot uh, as it is, but I also want to get um, some of the, the background as well because the background is basically saying, well, look, there's not much else there other than the tree. Uh, the nice light that I had just a few minutes ago is kind of gone. Uh, so I'm going to wait for a little bit to see if that comes back. Sometimes it does. I don't think it will right now because, of course, we're at that point where the sun is setting. Um, but that might mean that I have to do a little bit of dodging and burning when we get in uh, to uh, Lightroom. That might be the subject of a video because I haven't really talked about do dodging and burning a lot. We're getting a little bit of light on there. I'm going to just fire this off. We have got what we have got, which is important if, we, if we're going to do different bits of this in Photoshop, uh, is that we do have kind of a reference of where the light would go. Um, so we have some lighter bits, we have some darker bits, and as long as I'm properly exposed, that shouldn't be a problem. I'm also going to bracket this just to be on the safe side, although I don't think I really need to on this in this occasion. It really is just uh, for safety's uh, sake, because I probably won't be coming back here for quite some time. <laughs> This is the first image that I took that night. If you see where the sun is touching the tree and the stone wall around it, all of that has been slightly enhanced to give you a little more colour and vibrance. But I've also dodged some of the shadows in the image as well, which is one of the reasons that the trunk has some nice depth to it. In terms of the composition, what we have here is called a full shot because the subject is full in the frame. In film, these will often be framed in the middle and used to create symmetry in the shot. But here I'm setting the subject on the right hand side of the rule of thirds. The idea is to give the subject just some space and to see it in relation to its environment. But at the same time, not making the image look like the tree is lonely at all. If I'd wanted that, I'd have pulled back an awful lot more and used a lot more space around it. Once this shot was taken, I tried to find the composition that I'd come to this location for, but I still had some time to wait for the light. Okay, so I have a shot sorted out. We're in a really great position right now because if you, I'm, I'm t basically taking a silhouette of the tree. And when you do that, behind it, you can see the setting sun. And that's kind of what I wanted from this. It's a shame there is no really dramatic clouds or anything in, in the shot. And I think this possibly is one of those locations where I'm going to have to come back at a different point and say, um, OK, well, well, we'll try and do this again. It, what's interesting, there's, there's people flying uh, paragliders, I, uh, I, I think. I don't know. I, I, I don't go up in the air if I can avoid it, so uh, I don't really know. <laughs> What that is. And then there's a balloon over in the distance as well. And whilst all of these things would be great to capture, it's not really what I'm here for. What I'm here for is the sunset and the colours that that sun is going to get as it's, uh, as it's setting. It's starting to get there right now, but everything is misty, is hazy, and I think it's going to make a nice shot. But I don't think this is the last time that I'm going to come back to the tree. Right, we're on. We're just getting to that point now where the sun has sunk to the point where you've got this really lovely red 
um, orangey red glow. That's what I wanted because it's also highlighting the mountains that are behind it. And if I'm very lucky, I'm going to be able to get both of those in. So I've got to set up the camera now. I know roughly where I want to stand, but of course the settings are going to be completely different because the light levels would have changed since the last time that I looked at it, but that's okay. Okay, I have to do this really, really quickly. Otherwise I'm going to lose the light. But what we've got here, uh, just off to one side, we've got the, the tree here in silhouette. We're going to be doing a bracketed shot on this three shots that we're going to be doing. And you can see the sun, the sun just there in between uh, the top and bottom. That means I've had to raise the camera up a little bit for this uh, as well. But I've got to rush to do this now because the sun is setting uh, ever so ever so quickly. I'm just going to reframe this just a touch because of course I had to change things uh, for the video and we'll refocus that two second timer as always and I'm going to take that shot. And the other thing to remember with this is that I've actually got it. I'm just I'm just underexposing it a little bit because we're dealing with highlights in the sky and you want to make sure that those are properly exposed. We're shooting in RAW. We have got plenty of opportunities uh, to do something a little bit better, a little bit different with that. Uh, the other thing that I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring this down here and then focus on the foreground and do exactly the same thing just in case because we have got instances here where um, where that might not work. Now, okay, I, if I look at the images that I've got there, uh, obviously some are too dark and some are far too bright, uh, but I think there's a really nice mix there um, that should give me everything that I need to bring out all the colors, all the textures I want uh, in the image. So that's the first shot that I've got for this. And that was really the shot that I came here to get but it might not be the only shot that we get tonight because I think if I come around this way, I might be able to get something slightly different. Here is that silhouette shot. Again, this was using some dodging and burning, but mostly on the ground to simulate patches of light. It was important in this shot because that whole area had very little interest to it to begin with. So bringing in a little more interest to it, it really makes the shot and offsets the sun, which we can see reflected on the benches. Whilst I was quite pleased with this shot, it was done using only one of the bracketed shots that I took that night. In future images, I'd blend all of those shots together and you'll be able to see those towards the end of the video. OK, so this is a little bit of a different composition. You'll see that I've shifted everything over uh, to the left hand side of the thing because I wanted to have this area over here completely empty. The reason for that is I wanted to show the tree in relation to the rest of the landscape that it's in. I'll be talking about this in a video coming up. But again, haven't got long to do this, otherwise that sun uh, is going to set. The different uh, settings that we've got on here now, we're at f7, a 60th of a second at 160. Uh, I'm going to shove on my two second timer again just to make sure everything's kind of above board and we're going to take that picture. And now I'm going to focus once more just because I'm getting paranoid about this and I'll take it once more. Uh, and again, just reviewing those photos, uh, I should have what I was looking for. Uh, I've got a nice sharp uh, images where I need it. I've got a lovely sort of colors in the sunset uh, where I wanted it. Um, the other thing that I hadn't done so far uh, was to do a, a, um, a portrait picture of this. And actually, as a shot, uh, this is something that could lend itself to a portrait. Now, I'm having to uh, kind of make this up as I go along. Uh, but I think if I move up here, I can get maybe a bit more of a texture shot looking at the sun through here. So I'm just going to focus. I'm going to do this manually uh, because I don't really know what's going to happen. And I think that's it. I think I've got it with the sun just resting underneath the trees. That should be a really nice portrait shot if it, if it comes out. Let's hope it does. When sunsets happen, there's often an awful lot of things that you have to do at once. And so making videos like this at that time isn't always easy. As I'm looking right now, the sun is, is a, a little speckle of red sinking behind the hills. And it's gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. Uh, but it's not necessarily 
uh, the shot that you you want, and sometimes it, you you will get back into the computer, uh, uh, you know, looking at it as a big image for the first time and go, that wasn't what I wanted. But tonight, I think I've got something. We'll have to see. Um, in fact, you'll probably see before I do. These last two shots were my favourite of the night, especially this one, which I really thought worked better than the earlier silhouette shot. Like I said, this was achieved by blending all three images together and you can see how sharp the foreground is. Well, that's because I took the image with the two different focus points and blended those together in the computer. It's well worth doing if you're not entirely sure how much of your image is going to be sharp. But my favourite thing about this was the colour of the sky, something that I was able to bring into the final shot as well. With the first shot, I talked about the way that the image was framed to show the subject alone against the environment. Well, I've done something very similar here as well, with all of the interest stacked over to the left-hand side of the frame. Even though this is still a full shot and not a wide, it's meant to show the emptiness of the rest of the landscape around it. And that bend in the tree towards the viewer's eye should draw you into that empty space. I'd love to know what you think of these images, and of course, I'm always up for a discussion in the comments below. But that's it for this video, and if you'd like to see more, please hit the subscribe button, the bell icon, and the all notifications tab. But until next time, thanks ever so much for coming along, and don't forget, keep taking those photos.